Okay, we can start now. So, hi, I'm uh, Suraj Nair, and uh, uh, I, I have my colleague Nikhil Sumani here with me, and we will be talking about Tomb Robotics in Singapore. So, let's start. I've also pasted a video in the message box in case uh, we don't have time or uh, uh, if it's not clear enough by sharing the screen itself. So I'll talk quickly about Tomb Create Robotics, uh, what kind of projects we are doing in Singapore very, very quickly, and then uh, more about a, uh, one of our flagship projects in Singapore, which is uh, Aviation Challenge 2, where we are uh, actually uh, using ROS to a great extent. So a little bit about Tomb Create Robotics. So we come from our uh, HQ based in Germany, which is TUM, Technical University of Munich. Uh, and we come from the informatics school of robotics, so the department of robotics, which is housed in the informatics faculty by Professor Alois Knoll. Uh, he heads, he's the director of robotics and embedded systems group at TUM. He also heads the Transfer Institute for this uh, game BI in Germany. And in Singapore, we exist in the form of the cognitive systems and robotics group. Uh, we are only two years old in Singapore, and uh, although we are growing rapidly. Going to my next slide. So robotics portfolio, we've been in robotics for the last 31 years and uh, mainly in Europe. And we are covering pretty much all areas of robotics, industrial, cognitive service, medical, and very strongly also into management of very big uh, robotics projects in Europe. For example, the Human Brain Project, where Professor Knoll heads the uh, neuro robotics uh, sub project, and also the ECHOD and ECHOD++. So, and in uh, Europe, we are partnering with almost all major robot manufacturers and tier one suppliers in the automotive industry. Uh, we are quite new in Singapore, uh, only two, two and a half years, but we are already involved in a lot of activities and most of them uh, involve ROS as well. Uh, like Konghui Kong mentioned before in the first presentation, we are also one of the partners in the CERC Industrial Robotics Program where we are mainly building up a cognitive architecture for uh, semantic knowledge representation and reasoning for high-level decision-making in uh, distributed robotic systems. Uh, we are also working uh, with the robot platform uh, in Munich, where we are developing high-level intelligence uh, for this um, robot uh, head for human-robot interaction. Uh, we are doing some work with Festo and REC in Munich, uh, in the domain of service robotics. And uh, one of our flagship projects in Singapore is uh, the Aviation Challenge 2, which I will now go to and explain in more detail because it's heavily relying on ROS. So uh, I'm not sure if this uh, animation works here, but uh, sorry for the slide though. I will just uh, give you a quick introduction about what uh, Aviation Challenge is. So Singapore is one of the global uh, leaders in aviation or uh, uh, at least airport infrastructures in the world, where the Singapore airport is has been rated number one for the last 10, 15 years in a row. So, and it's uh, heavy, heavily under expansion, both in the passenger domain and also in the cargo domain. So the Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore, which is a government entity which controls the airspace and all the airports in Singapore, uh, came up with a challenge, uh, heavily relying on automation and robotics in order to automate lot of processes both in the uh, civilian airport and the cargo airport. And they came up with two call for proposals, uh, namely Aviation Challenge 1 for the uh, passenger terminal and Aviation Challenge 2 for the cargo terminal. And Toom Create was one of the uh, teams selected to run uh, the Aviation Challenge 2, which is basically automating the buildup and breakdown of uh, cargo pallets, which actually uh, are packed with uh, cargo um, and uh, loaded onto the aircrafts for air cargo. So this uh, Aviation Challenge 2, which deals with cargo handling, it's quite a complex problem. Uh, it's, uh, it's basically a palletization problem, but without knowing what you're actually palletizing. This makes the problem really a big one with high mix issues. So uh, it's highly manpower intensive working at heights and uh, uh, requires manual and heavy material handling. And the main part of the challenge comes uh, uh, from the payload itself, which can uh, in size vary from 30 centimeters to two meters in uh, dimensions. And in, in the form of weight, it can vary anywhere from one kilo to uh, five tons for a, one single shipment. And this makes the problem quite uh, diverse and large in terms of volume uh, and weight. 
and therefore traditional palletization techniques uh, cannot be used uh, and also one size fits all solution is not practical here so this was basically the outcome uh, we came up with a design philosophy of uh, having a coarse cognition loop in the form of perception cognition and action in order to solve this problem so basically understand what you're trying to grasp and then uh, within the capabilities of your actuators try to uh, achieve maximum automation uh, from whatever is possible and for this architecture we are using ross as a middleware so this is how our system looks like uh, we are relying on a very large gantry robot it's around uh, 8 meters in height in terms of the vertical stroke uh, it can lift up to 500 kilos of payload while providing a uh, precision or repeatability of 0.1 millimeters this can move very fast uh, up to 400 4 meters per second and also very slow with the same precision we also have perception systems to detect the cargo and automatically plan and optimize the packing process there is a video which i will play now uh, to show how the system looks like in the form of the gantry itself so this uh, motion is all controlled by ross of course we have a low level interface to the google robot uh, through uh, the A abb irc5 controller but all, all the high level decision making is done by ross I will stop there and continue. So this was just about the robot, and uh, currently we are uh, okay. So that's what uh, we just commissioned this robot, and currently we are uh, moving ahead with the systems integration and the application de development. I will now hand over to my colleague uh, Nikhil, who will actually give a little bit uh, more detail about the low-level components and also the components which are actually relying on ROS. Hello. Uh So the first systems or the first subsystem that uh, we have here is a, a perception system for detect, detecting and tracking the cargo, and uh, this is uh, basically measuring all the boxes that uh, that come into the system. Um, so they have to be placed in this uh, in this measurement area, and then we have multiple RGBD cameras from which uh, we can estimate the uh, the dimensions of the object, the labels that are on that, and uh, we use uh, ross extensively especially for synchronizing all the cameras that we have and also pcl to some extent uh, the accuracy that we can achieve with this is around 1 cm for a 2 m long uh, box and, uh, and this is uh, relying only on uh, consumer grade uh, cameras like the kinect version 2 another subsystem uh, we have is uh, the, the actual cognitive capability which is uh, optimizing the placement of these uh, cargo uh, packets onto the pallet so as you can see in the picture here uh, we have some heuristics on how to uh, optimize the placement of these boxes uh, keeping in mind different constraints like uh, fragile objects cannot uh, should be uh, should be handled with care and uh, not stacked on top and uh, uh, also the weight distribution and optimizing the center of mass and so on so this is a mathematical optimization problem and uh, this whole thing of course is online so this is not uh, uh, this is not done offline because we we can do this as uh, as and when the cargo comes uh, for the visualization for this uh, we are using arvis extensively not only for our debugging but also for some interaction uh, 
Another component uh, that we use from ROS is uh, the Smash Execution Engine. Uh, this is for modeling high-level behaviors of the robot and uh, and define and modeling the interconnection between all these subsystems in in a more uh, generic and more standardized way. And we're using the tool called FlexP, uh, which is uh, which is a nice graphical user interface and also an execution engine over the over the Smash. Uh, package from ROS. And so far, we've found it uh, quite useful, not only for modeling, uh, modeling the states and uh, and uh, running them, but also for controlling the runtime and uh, execution monitoring, as you see in the picture here. So yeah, these are, uh, these are the, uh, these are the modules where we use ROS extensively. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all from our side. Uh, another extension. Since I have a few more minutes, another extension that I'm planning, uh, that we are planning for this, uh, the FlexP engine is a plugin for formal verification, where you can load the state machines and have this uh, formally checked by a tool like uh, Spin. Uh, this is basically done using uh, an exporter to the Promila modeling language, and this is uh, this is one feature that we are also looking uh, to release as open source hopefully in the future, and we are working closely with the developers of FlexB for this uh, for this particular module. And uh, I think this can also be relevant for the ROS industrial, for people industri interested in ROS industrial applications. Yeah. Thanks, Nikhil. So that's all about our talk for today, and this is our team in Singapore. Uh, and uh, any questions, you can just write to us or visit the website. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Nice presentation. Any questions? The palletization software is not currently available in the form of open source code, but we are just waiting for a publication to get through. Mm -hmm. And then we would be uh, uh, thinking about releasing it open source. Yes. So right now this transfer is done uh, manually, but yeah. So uh, uh, this is a very good question about how the boxes are transferred. So uh, the current design of the uh, system footprint is quite unoptimal because we have to stick to the constraints of the challenge. So the aviation challenge has a constraint with the robot footprint because uh, there is a protocol on how the teams will be judged uh, on their performance. But if we want to scale it up to a real pro uh, business case or uh, make an industrial product, of course, we will just make the gantry uh, longer so that everything can be handled automatically. So we have we are already looking into this. So in that case, you would not need a transfer. Yeah. So the robot can directly pick it from the scanning area. Uh, this is why we also have a larger vision. Uh, I just go one slide behind where you can see that uh, the gantry is very long and it can, uh, there are multiple uh, robots on it. Uh, and they can work in uh, independently or also collaboratively on different stations or at or on the same station at the same time so in this case they have a much uh, longer reach one last question uh, the gripper the gripper is a very good question again uh, of course there is no gripper uh, which we can buy out of the box uh, and uh, this is something which is quite um, uh, intrinsic to the challenge. So we are making our own hardware and uh, the gripper design is one of it, one uh, one uh, part of it. Uh, so we, we have a couple of tools which we are designing, uh, but they are not 100% um, integrated yet. But uh, with this system, we are trying to lift up to 300 kilos of payload with multiple grippers. And of course, we have a tool changer. We have a tool change me mechanism, and uh, other than the robot controller, we have another uh, real-time back-off uh, network with uh, multiple uh, tools, uh, actuators, and sensors, which are independent of the robot itself. One last question. Well, it's uh, the verification that we are trying to do is only a behavior-level verification. It's it's not uh, verifying the hardware, so it's not verifying hardware in loop per se. It's verifying that the behavior is valid and. Uh, if there are unreachable states in the behavior or if there's a deadlock situation or something like that. Uh, it's, it's not really a hardware verification. 
Yes, yes, fragility of the packages is considered. This is a part of the constraints uh, in the bin packing. Uh, we also have auxiliary sensing systems to know if a package is good enough to be grasped or not. So, for example, we also do analysis on the surface to see how to best grasp, grasp a package.